In Creo Parametric, you can use a curvature analysis to assess the aesthetic qualities of curves and surfaces. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I have a part model open. It's got some complex surfacing in here. To access the curvature command, you go to the analysis tab. Here we have curvature. The drop down allows you to access shaded curvature for things like Gaussian curvature. Let's just use the regular curvature command. And curvature is just one over the radius at any point along a curve or a surface. Here in the dialog box, you can see that we have a geometry collector. It's automatically activated. First, let's take a look at the different ways that you can analyze curves. Now I'm gonna select this edge over here. Let's hold down the control key and select this other edge over there. So you can see these porcupine plots of the curvature. Right now they are a little small to see because the scale is kind of low. I'm gonna double click on this and change the value and hit the enter key. Be aware you can also do this from the dimension on the screen. And by making the curvature bigger, we can see more more detail about how the curvature changes shape along those references and you can see that uh, you know it kind of changes over here it's not that smooth or maybe as beautiful as we want it to be another big indication here is that you can see that we have a gap in between here at the boundary which which means we do not have curvature continuity from one curve to the other curve let's take a look at some of the other different controls here we have the quality level you can crank this up you'll notice as you crank it up you get more porcupines that are located in there and so let's find a nice little happy medium in there from the sample drop down list you can either change the quality or you can control the number of the different porcupines that you have or the step in between them. That's way too close. Let's go back to quality. I usually just leave it on that. Also for the style, you can see right here, you can have a smooth curve in between there. This one makes it more of like straight lines from one porcupine to another, or you can get rid of the curve on top of the spikes. Let me go back to the default choice. Again, that's what I usually use inside of there. And here we have the minimum curvature and the maximum curvature reported. From this drop-down list, instead of doing this as a quick analysis, you could do this as a saved analysis and give it a name. And that way you can enable persistent display. In other words, this curvature will be displayed on the computer screen while you work and that way you can see in real time how changes to your features are changing this curvature analysis. And the other choice that you have in here is to create this as a feature. In other words, it'll appear in the model tree and it'll have parameters available for this minimum and maximum curvature in case you wanted to use those in a user-defined analysis or part of a feasibility and or optimization study in BMX. But I'm just doing a quick analysis over here. One control that I haven't shown you yet, though, here is the plot drop-down list. So instead of taking a look at the curvature, you can take a look at the radius. Again, they are the inverse of each other's. The curvature is one over the radius. And you can also display the tangents along the curve. You can see how the tangents are going in there. But again, I probably use this probably 99% of the time to take a look at the curvature. You also have a collector if you want to measure the curvature with respect to a particular coordinate system, but I usually don't do that. All right, so we've got those edges in there. Let's take a look at some other edges. Let's go around, say, uh, this loop over here. I'll select this one. And to add additional curves in there, you're going to use the control key. And so again, we can see in here how the curvature changes along the lengths of those curves. And you might say, you know, maybe I want to do some refinement over there. Maybe I'm not happy with how the curvature is displayed on that geometry. 
And again, one more example. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm just selecting the new surface and it automatically ends up in the collector. If you hold down the right mouse button from the pop-up menu, you can activate the coordinate system collector or clear whatever you have selected. That way, again, I'll select that curve over there and that curve over there. And again, you can see that we have this abrupt, I hope you can see that, let me try to angle it. Here you can see that we have the curve over here, here's the curvature, and then we have this abrupt change in the value of the curvature. So again, it helps you assess some of the different qualities along here. And again, we can take a look over there. It's not disjointed, but there is a change in the value of the curvature right at the boundary. So that's how you can use it for assessing different edges. Let's take a look at surfaces. So I'll start off, let's start off with couple of easy surfaces. So I selected that surface and the first thing is right now the scale is way too high in the first direction. And you can change the scale. Or is that the first direction? Yeah, that is the first direction. Let's change that to 0.05 just to scale it down a little bit. And right now we're using the same scale uh, in both directions. And so what you get is a series of sort of like internal edges or curves that it creates on the surface to evaluate the curvature in each of the directions. So let's take a look in here. You can control the number of different sort of like lines along which it is analyzing the curvature. And sometimes when you have them displayed in both directions, it can be a little difficult to see what you are analyzing. Let me select that other surface over there. And so again, we can see the curvature in here. And so what you might want to do is change the number, like reduce down to the minimum, which is a value of one in one of the directions so that you can see the porcupines, in this case, in the second direction. And then you can flip that. Maybe I'm going to crank this up. Maybe I want to even hire like maybe eight different sets of porcupines and then crank this one down to one so that I can see it over here. The other trick that you can do in order to make the different porcupines more visible in the first and or second direction is to change the scale. So right now I've got six set of porcupines in the first direction. If I don't want to see any porcupines in the other direction, just change the scale to zero in the other direction. And that way I can see these porcupines over here. Let's select some surfaces with a little bit more change in geometry. And in this case over here, maybe I want to crank up the scale for the ones that I'm seeing to 0.1. So I can see that, oh yeah, it's kind of, is this shaped differently on each side in here hmm, that's kind of interesting now nah, it looks like they might be parallel in there and so again you can say hey let's get some more that are located here in this direction and let's change the scale in the second direction change that to a value of 0.1 and then crank up the number of locations where we're analyzing this and so again you're able to see sort of like the change in the aesthetic quality of the surfaces as you move along here and maybe you end up adding some more surfaces in here whoa that was way that one did not help let's hold down the control key and deselect it uh, so again you're constantly adjusting it in order to make sure that you're able to interpret what you need to about the quality of a given surface and so in here, again, we have our minimum and maximum curvature listed in here. When you are analyzing surfaces, you do not have the choice to create this as a feature. You just have the quick where you're looking at it inside of this dialog box, and then the saved option if you want to enable persistent display. So in that way, you're able to use the curvature analysis dialog box in order to assess aesthetic quality of your surfaces and curves. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.careowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.